sabo kamwa niwala kamwa niwala Greetings, my people. Greetings from all corners. It depends where you are watching from. This is Miro African Television. We are on episode A. For those who are just joining us for the first time, special greetings from my side. Um, <laughs> uh, George, I'm greeting you. I got dragged on my. My people, my people. Um, here, this Middle Africa, as I just mentioned, uh, is a platform where people, if you know anything that can bring us Biafra, join in. You may contact me, tell me that you have something to say, you have something to give to your people. Middle African Television is not a group, nor uh, an entity. It's just a platform if you if you know that your knowledge is active to educate your people come in middle africa africa will grant um a program or uh, time for you so that you will teach your people thousands of people are listening in learning from what is coming out of middle africa it's not only stick to barista emeka our senior brother the room the door is open to all Africans, not even only Nigerians, all Africans as a whole. You understand me? We don't take side, but if we are hosting you on this platform, it is our duty to protect your interests. And if you if you think that the interest we are protecting is not okay for you, come in. You have the number from United States. Call the line. Challenge every topic that is going on. Or you call the German line, you challenge every topic going on. Or you call with Skype. Skype is even uh, free. WhatsApp call is now activated. You can call with WhatsApp. The world will hear you. The number is there. Tell us your own side of the story. The room is open. Let's welcome our special brother, brother and barrister, Emeka. Please welcome to episode nine right if i'm not mistaken episode eight sorry of all our right. program thank you very much my brother zebedee thank you um all the viewers and all the listeners i'm glad to be in your midst and um, i welcome all of you to this episode i am called emeka emeka siri um a, a biafran lawyer and uh, a biafran activist uh perhaps you've heard about me or you may still know much about me um, I'm, part, I'm one of you, one of the Biafran activists. Uh, thank you. As we go on, uh, we may know one another better. So thank you for joining. And uh, I pray that and uh, I also request that you be attentive and uh, get as much information as possible tonight. Thank you. God bless you. Yes. Yeah, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Baris. I'm here. Okay. Uh, anyway, anyway, I can't have to know. I can't have to know Biafra. 
uh, my people, my people. Um, now, uh, for those who are asking, where is our number? Men looking at the screen now, at the left side, top, you will see Teleconnect, Miro African TV, and the people. Plus one, two, blah, blah, blah is our number. That's, let me repeat it. Plus one, two, five, three, two, nine, nine, two, nine, seven, eight. For those calling from US. Those calling within Europe. Plus four, nine, two, zero, three, four, five, one, six, zero, nine, two, seven. For those who doesn't have credits to call line directly, call us on WhatsApp. Nigeria line plus two three four eight one four three seven five two nine four four or you may add Miro African television to your Skype you will find us with our ID add us call in and uh, join the chorus God bless you as you're listening so barrister I have yes. a special something that is touching me what is that we get a message that Nigeria have been, have started rolling down their armor tankers and military to east. Are we at war? <laughs> um, it's quite um, it's quite bad. Um, I heard about it, but that is very bad that Nigeria is rolling out its tanks and armored cars and um, heavy military equipment to the east. Um, I think that it's possible that they are being apprehensive. Maybe they think that something may go wrong. At the moment, I would think that um, it's a precautionary measure they are taking, but it's giving a wrong impression. It's over militarization of Eastern Nigeria, it's giving a wrong impression. Uh, I, I condemn it entirely. I condemn it totally. They are bringing fear into the people. Um, and um, you see, when you gather those things there, you gather the equipment, the heavy uh, uh, military equipment there with all the things, or anything can trigger up and they, they start using those things against innocent uh, civilians. So I condemn it totally. It is wrong. They shouldn't do that. I think that they are doing it because maybe they are feeling threatened or uh, apprehensive of what may happen. Because of certain statements some people have made, some Biafran activists have made, I think when you make some provocative statements or statements that will frighten your opponent, then your opponent can start getting ready for you. Because I have had some Biafran activists uh, uh, boasting of how they are going to burn down Nigeria, uh, boasting of so many things. And it's possible that such boasts have made Nigerian government to now start getting ready in case they will um, actualize their boast. Who knows? So it's possible. You know, the Igbo say that it's only a tree you will tell that you're going to cut it and the tree will stand there but if it's someone that's alive you say i'm going to cut you down i'm going to destroy you then he'll start preparing in case you really mean what you say so i think that uh, it is possible that the nigerian authorities have been either provoked or have been um uh, put into fear and therefore they are trying to um take precautionary measures in case the people who are boasting of destroying Nigeria in case they have something really uh, behind their back. Maybe that's why the government is trying to do this. But I'm thinking that they have gone too far by um, bringing such intimidating um, military presence in this East as if it is a zone that is at war. So I don't, I don't uh, agree with what Nigerian government has done. Uh, if if they are thinking of um, protecting Nigeria against the the boosts of uh, some people, uh, they, they, I think there's a better way of doing it and not over militarizing the zone. That's what that's my take on that on that issue. Uh, but Barista, um, 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 we may say today there is boasting, 
But before this day, our eastern region has been a, 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 I won't, I don't know how to mention it. Eastern region has been the border of Nigeria. There have been the, the weir immigration custom. It's only Navy that is not operating in the, in the road to east. Now, the, with the uh, excuses of whatever, they are now pushing, militarizing the entire eastern region. Is that is is, is there no, nothing that we can do to stop such a move? What can you do now? What can you do? We are still in Nigeria. We are still under the Nigerian government. You see, um, I I do I really don't know why this thing has come to this level. Um, you see, someone who fetches ant infested fagot will definitely expect lizards to visit him so the way this thing was planned from the beginning it could have been quiet we could have been quiet all these things will not have arisen but it's like the thing has got out of hand so we may have to find our own, and a way to control it so it doesn't get out of hand or it has actually gotten out of hand we yes. don't really know where this thing will end but you know? uh, um because of somebody boasting the federal government start moving their military equipment to the eastern region does yeah it, because does it, it mean they don't have they don't have um, control of their borders you see, who knows? When someone is boasting, you don't know where his power lies. You don't know whether he has some hidden hidden army somewhere. You don't know whether he has an arrangement with one country or the other. Do you blame Nigerian government now? Somebody is boasting of how he's going to destroy Nigeria. But then, Nigeria, Nigeria, since they have been killing the people in the East, they are, nobody has ever carried even those stone to resist the Nigerian government. I agree, I agree with you. But someone is boasting and giving a date and telling the world what he's going to do or if Nigeria does the look at what he's going to do. And I, I I wouldn't blame Nigerian government for taking precaution, but I'm saying that it's like they're overdoing things. It's like they're overdoing things. Yes, if someone is boasting that he's going to destroy Nigeria, I expect Nigeria to also be careful and uh, send out their, their um, um, secret agents or police or security uh, agents to make sure that everything is it's under control. Order. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But over militarizing, the, that is intimidating the people with military personnel, military gadgets all over. It's like a, a zone that is at war. But, so it's uh, like overdoing things. But, but, but um, yes. um, we will not mention names, but we will try to narrate things. Um, those who who try to boast should also know that they are, they, are, they, are, they are trying to fall into plan B of the federal government. Because all Nigeria knows that the Igbos has investment every corner. And uh, as far as there is peace, they cannot seize any of their property. That's right. But when they, <laughs> even though it's the federal government that started a problem in the in the area, they will say that you are the one that started it. You understand? And they will use the opportunity to seize. Even somebody called me and made me to understand that uh, one Hausa guy living in near their place told him that this school that Iboma, the private school Iboma built, uh, <laughs> he's praying every day for problem to come so that that one will become <laughs> his private property. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are now falling yeah. into their traps. Well, um, what can we say? What can I say? Um, if you get independence by due process of law, you will lose nothing. All your properties will remain your anywhere they are in Nigeria. If you get your independence by due process of law, 
everything you own anywhere in Nigeria will remain your own. But if you get it through war, your enemy can declare your property as enemy property and pass the law of sequestration and seize your property as enemy property. Hmm. And you lose everything. That's why I have been preaching and preaching. Let us use legal methodology and get this thing. If war is provoked and it starts, you don't know where it will end. War, war shouldn't even come at all because we don't even have matches. No, no cupboard. Even though well, Onala, to, to scare them away, if you put up on a lock, Okube, they said that the would be We don't even well, have anyone. I don't know what I don't know the people who are boasting of destroying Nigeria. I don't know what they have. It is possible that like some people said that they said they are both that is with mouth, that they want to use their mouth to destroy Nigeria. It's not that they have weapon, but mouth. All right, you may your mind, in your mind you may say you want to destroy Nigeria with your mouth. But the opponent, Nigeria doesn't see it that way. Nigeria may think that you have something behind your back. That you have something. <laughs> so while in your mind, you are saying you are destroying it with your mouth. But the other people are understanding it differently. That's why they're getting ready. In case you have something behind your back. Um, but Barristow, Chineke uh, Mulego, let's, let's fix the fact now. We want to destroy Nigeria with our mouth, right? Yeah. <laughs> And uh, men looking inside Nigeria today, look inside geographical areas. Yes. <laughs> Which area is being crippled now? Um, I think it is our own area that is being crippled. The eastern area is being crippled now. Because the, the agitations and the protests and the things that are happening are actually happening in the eastern area. Um, well, I think that the awareness has been created enough. There is time for everything. The awareness, the protests, those awareness, those um, protests have created much awareness. And I may say sufficient awareness. Next thing now is going into the real issue. Yes. That is the issue. There are, there is no part of the world now where Biafra has not been advertised. Owazrike started advertisement and Namdekano concluded it. He has promoted, Namdekano promoted Biafra to the uttermost parts of the world through his radio broadcasts. Yes. Which, which Owazrike started. Yes. Namdekano was his boy and now his boy continue from where he stopped and finish the work. The, the project of advertising Biafra all over the world, that awareness creation has been completed. Now is to implement. Yes, you see, the problem with some of us may be not knowing when your own duty has finished. <laughs> yes. That may be a problem. Yes. You know, I, when I spoke to you the other day, I said we have entered into Biafra Project Phase 2. Yes. And I told you that after Phase 2, there will be Phase 3. Yes, you said so. But at Phase 3, I may not be there. I don't know who will accomplish Phase 3. Hmm. That this thing is like a relay race. You run and you give the button, you pass the button over to the next person. The next person passes the button over to the next person until we get to the finishing line. I and my team, work, team members, team workers, are going into phase two of the Biafran project because enough advertisement has been made, enough awareness has been created. We're now going into establishing or creating Biafra within Nigeria. That's the first step. Okay. So I will explain more on that. But today, uh, we are talking about this over militarization of the Biafran territory. Yes. That's what you talk 
yeah that is the issue you raised yes that is um, the if you are traveling from lagos to east from lagos every road is open crossing bini immediately you started entering eastern region you will start seeing even the time i went to africa i saw all those things and uh, i was sitting down with my people people came to visit us <laughs> We are drinking and then we are talking how they will deal with uh, <laughs> Nigeria when, when the problem start. <laughs> I was laughing. You know, the people there are not seeing all those things as threat. You know, I told the guy, I said, young man, you are bending your trousers to go and fight somebody while your teeth is already on the ground. He said, how do I mean? I said, this guy have ducked in into every corner of your community not in full state again now every corner of your community when and where are you going to start to fight them before you come out from your dog you will let not kill you <laughs> it's better you surrender because it's already over the war have not started but it's over accept it accept it for for real you know our people keep on arguing keep on arguing that's a military are there how many checkpoints do you pass from Ishuekobuehi to Mwai? That is up to for the five minutes, even 30 something minutes if the road is or 30 minutes if the road is good. You will meet up to five to six checkpoints. We should not project nor alter a word of we, they will see. Even say they will see, we should leave it. Now, awareness, as you just said, have been created let us mellow down and start building the foundation of our nation yes my brother that you you've made the right point um when you both and say you are going to see i'm going to deal with you then the other person will start getting ready in case you you really have something up your sleeves who knows so i i, I on one hand i don't really blame nigeria for getting ready for war in case these people are uh, in case they have some backings because they're also reading what we are reading on the internet you see the things going on, on the internet that yeah. so so country the so country has uh, recognized biafra so country will support biafra so country all those boasts and boasting who knows whether it's true so <laughs> it's possible that if anything happens some countries will support Bia biafra or support the 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 people that are boasting of war yeah it's possible but Barista, Nigeria is supposed to also have intelligent officers that should be analyzing all those things that most of them are fake news. How do you because know which one is fake? How do you know? Even me which here, I saw our people from Turkey showing one man that is ambassador from Turkey, whatever. I told my people, get out of here. Stop fooling your people. Stop manipulating. Somebody who is a businessman. And you are now pressing him that he is uh, he's from um, Turkish uh, Ministry or whatever, whatever. All this is kakabu story. How do you know? It may be correct. It may be true. It may be true. If somebody says that uh, Turkish government will, will support them to fight a war, if there's a war, Turkish, gov Turkish government, Turkey is a, is, a, is, a, is a country, it's a sovereign nation. So they also have military. They have power. They have sovereign power. So they can as well support yes. Biafra. There fight. is something that I don't understand. Our people, we are saying, um, uh, President Buhari, want to Islamize our area. That that is the first message. Yes. And all of us, we are buying that he wants to Islamize the Eastern region. Have you asked yourself? I'm talking to my people, not you, Barista. Yeah. Which people bring that religion to Nigeria? from which country did that religion came and is the, it, uh, islamic country, from islamic countries turkey is one turkey is turkey an islamic was the, 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 the captain and they <laughs> said that their mission wasn't finished in nigeria and now of all of a sudden the same turkey now turned their back against the people where they brought their their culture and start supporting you to pull on other accomplished mission Chideke well i don't know i even heard that um, one islamic country is it iran that is coming to build a hospital in enugu or something and um if, if eastern region allow iran 
to bring their foreign policy inside Nigeria, I will quote you people, right? America will pull their finger from your anus. And everything that remains in your belly will fall out. Uh, as you people, in short, you people, you people don't, I don't know the type of brain you guys are using. Iran and Israel that you are claiming that Israel is your brother, Israel is this, blah, blah, blah. Does Iran and Israel eat even sit, even any seat where Iranian man just wake up, Israel man will tell you buy a new one, he will not sit on that seat. Now, Iran is coming to build hospital. It will, man, let it be a new goal. Let that thing not come to your state. <laughs> <laughs> because I um, personally we will compare against it wholeheartedly. Period. You know? Okay. Okay, that's okay. Um, the thing is that um, I don't know what we're going to do to bring peace in our land. At least let's have peace. If people that are going, let our our region, the Biafra region, let it be peaceful. Let there be peace among us. Let there be love and unity among us. You know, let's be wise. Let's be wise a little. At least let's be a little wise. You know, it's like we 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 overdo things and we boast and we are so arrogant. We are so arrogant. Hey, it's affecting us badly. It's affecting us badly. You know, it's not yet there. They are fighting. They are fighting Biafra to get Biafra. Fighting Nigeria. Yeah. They are fighting Roman Catholic. They are fighting a lot of things. All of them at the same time. Fighting themselves, even the Biafrans, fighting themselves, destroying themselves. It's, uh, it's unheard of. It's a horrible thing. But, and the, 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 the spiritual principle is there. A house divided against itself cannot stand. That's right. We all started together. But then somebody will now rise up out of envy and try to destroy the other person in order to rise. And what is it? Okay, fine. I created the ideology. I created the ideas. The, uh, yes, I have the gift of creativity. I can create ideas. Yes, I am gifted. I don't know everything, but that is my special area. I am gifted in problem-solving um, um, it, it matters. That is when you give me a problem, I will think and think and think through it, and I produce um, a, a blueprint to solve that problem. Yes, I'm gifted. Now, if I, if I create such a thing and uh, for us to work with it, the next thing is you take it and run and then destroy me and shine and shine. What is it for? It's you destroy me and take, it, take that idea and shine and run and then destroy me and talk evil of me. It doesn't kill me. It doesn't destroy me. I will still create more ideas because it's like a well. It doesn't dry up. I will still create more. So there's no need. We are working together. If I bring up an idea which you think is good, work with it. Work. Don't destroy me. Let's go ahead and build. You know? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's uh, not, uh, yeah. Yeah. The the topic you raise is very powerful, and uh, that remind me something. Um. As we want to restructure and rebuild Biafra. How, what can we do to bring all Biafrans, all Biafran agitators from A to B to Z to corner, wherever they belong, under one pot? Because I believe well, that our solution will be unity. Yeah, we started, we have already laid the foundation. It's for people to believe, for people to obey. The problem with Biafrans is not only the problem of leadership, but followership. Not only leadership, but followership. Many don't want to follow. Every person wants to lead. Um, you find out that when I joined the struggle, um, I decided to stay behind. Because Looking at our lifestyle, the the Igbos, um, we are not governed by one man. We, we are not led by one man. We are led by a council of elders right from our villages. So we don't have that one-man leadership, one like uh, you have in the north or in the west, 
where one man will be the leader and every person will be bowing down to him. <laughs> it's not we don't our have, culture, yeah? No, it's not our culture. Rather, what we do is, of course, we have a village head. In our village, we have village head, we have a town hall, we have village meetings, we have market square, we have town crier. So when a thing is required, when uh, a meeting or something um, is to be done, the town crier goes around and beats the drum and uh, and uh, creates the invites the people to the meeting, and uh, all the adults will gather, either in our village square or in the Ezra's palace. All the adults will gather, um, and then we will take a decision. In that meeting, the head of the village, either the village head or the chief or the uh, Ezra, whoever will preside. So it's not that we are we are leaderless. We are not leaderless. We have leaders. But when we gather together, we will now bring up uh, uh, opinions. Will, any issue will be properly analyzed, debated, and uh, eventually we come up with a solution. And then we'll now, the, before the elder or the chief or the village head will say, will say um, uh, have we agreed on this? This is this, 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 this. Have we, is this our opinion? Everybody say yes. Then there's a, or the chief will not take his staff or for, and hit on the floor and say, this is our, what we have agreed. That is democracy. That, yeah, you can see that it is a concern. All of us have debated that issue and we have agreed upon a thing before the elder or the chief or the elder will not strike his offer or his, um, walking stick on the floor boom and said this is what we have agreed so that is how we are ruled we are not ruled by one man who will now command and control and every person will bow to him and under oath i even heard that some are making people to swear oath to have allegiance <laughs> to him you know this is not our culture it is not our culture we don't believe in dictatorship we don't believe in that so when I came into the struggle and organized this body called Indigenous People of Biafra and I organized elders together called the Council of Elders, I removed myself and said, let the elders now lead doors and give us, that is, they can send us on errand and we go on errand and we come back to them and we report. How do you Indeed. mean, uh, Barista, one minute, somebody says no voice. Um, uh, Rita Nobog, can't you hear me? One minute. It's not possible because it's, uh, it's, it's everything is green on my side. I'm hearing everything is clear. But people outside there are they hearing? Yes, I just I just uh, listening from the public side. Everything. Uh, yeah, somebody okay. says there is voice. Yeah, okay. Thank you, my brother. Uh, Rita, please check your phone. Maybe the volume is down or you muted everything. Or you need to reactivate it. So, sorry, sir. Please continue. Yeah, I was saying that um, then uh, uh, the elders should now lead and give us instruction on what to do. If neighbors have an adage or saying that, I think so. I think so. I think so. Exactly. So when the elders send you, you go with the authority of the elders and yes. you'll be you'll be very bold. So when we go and we come back, we now report to them, look at what we have done. That is our method of governance in Igbo land, in Biafra land. So but the there's a problem now. The elders have been relegated to the background. They have been uh, um, uh, the youths no longer respect them. The, the youths have been told to ignore the elders and abuse them and and uh, you know disrespect them and so on. So a lot of problems have arisen now. We may have to now reorient the minds of our youth to begin again to to respect the elders. So if there is no respect in the land, if there is no proper structure in the land, we cannot stand. We cannot. That is, if we, assuming we get independence now in this situation where there is no respect in the land. Listen, there will be anarchy. People, there will be no orderliness. There will yes. be anarchy, yes. killing, killing. In fact, at the moment, people are even claiming, some say they are the presidents of Biafra, some say they are prime ministers, some say they are the uh, commander-in-chief and so 
All these factions will begin to kill themselves when they get independence. They will begin to fight. They will begin to fight who is in, in control, who is in charge of Biafra. They will finish themselves. You know, I, um, I, I don't know why it is so difficult to uh, understand this simple plan. You are talking about unity. We have already created that unity. We have created the platform or the structure for unity, which cannot be destroyed. Because when we gather these elders together and form the customary government, I personally notified Nigerian government. I issued legal notice to Nigerian government that we have formed the customary government of Biafra, headed by the elders. I, I notified Nigerian government. So they know me, they know the elders, they know us as customary government. But the issue is that because our... Uh, Barrister, one minute, a call is coming in. I don't know whether you will hear it, but let's see. Yes, I... I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. It's a okay. WhatsApp call. It's a WhatsApp call. Yes. Hello, the caller on the line. Can you hear me? I can hear you very clearly. The caller on the line. Can you hear me? My name is uh, Okechuku. Yes, I can hear you Hello? very clearly. My name is Okechuku. Hello, I can, can hear you hear very Barista? clearly. Yes, I can hear Okechuku. You are welcome, Okechuku. Yes. Okay, continue because I cannot monitor. I can hear you. Yes, Okechuku. Can I make a small contribution, please? Yes, please. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Hello? Yes, go ahead. We can hear you. Go ahead. Hello? Okechuku, go ahead. If you can hear me, go ahead. But it's hearing you. Let me figure out how okay. to listen to you. For, for this this is my actual the first time of calling to this program uh, i want to thank you for this program the, the facebook platform is an important platform of dissemination of information now with this platform our people everywhere connect at the right moment i am in namibia i'm a doctor in namibia working but i trained in nigeria and i just came to namibia by two about two years ago we also have some ebos here in namibia about we are up to like medical professionals we're up to like uh 100 and something here doctors and pharmacists doctors and pharmacists all of us left to come here and when we work here it, the government is fine but you know that you don't belong here so um i want to make a, just a small reference to what the barrister is saying about uh what the youths are doing and the elders the, the barrister i don't know you see people have perspectives people have a perspective through which they see things um you have to understand the pastor has to understand that the you these youths you are talking of are people that when you are in school or whatever you are doing you are told the elders will tell you to work hard and when you come up you now see that the elders have been lying to you all this way they've kept quiet all this way they've kept quiet all they want to do is get their own make sure of their own all their children are out training abroad uh, they, they they create a, a living space for themselves why the other youths sundry of our youths are all dying and this is what makes the youths not to believe in the elders again if you have a father and your father does not do his responsibilities to you you have to start doubting whether this person is your father and if another person that is not even your father, not related to you, does a fatherly role to you. You have to start taking, it's a natural reaction. The way, the way the Igbos are rejecting Nigeria, it's somehow paradoxical because Igbos, we are one of the people that fought for Nigeria, got our independence and all that, and they are now rejecting them. It is the way Nigeria is treating them. That's the same way we are treating our elders now. Please, sir, you are trying, the Paris is trying to absorb our elders from the problem we had. Why every problem we are having now is because of our elders. Starting with the elders, our elders that fought independence for us. When the Igbos were being killed in the north in 1945 and 1953, Nnamdi Aziki never considered it important. And he kept quiet. He didn't, he didn't see anything. When we got independence, and uh, Amadou Bello was saying that he hates the Igbos, he doesn't want the Igbos. Nnamdi um, um, did not consider this important. You cannot federate with people that want to destroy you. 
the lion does not the, the antelope does not federate with the lion you cannot apart from the fact that we are very different they are, the purpose of this nothing else they are very different look at their society with all the 70 percent of the resources that have been coming from us going to them what, what have they achieved with it they have not grown all the resources from nigeria are going to their to their land but they have not developed why the the ones that the, our resources are being taken away why we are the ones developing please the barrister i like what you know i've been following and he talks a lot of sense in some things but nobody knows it all i think the most important thing is a lot of people might be clamoring that they want to be afra why actually they might not what i want is the true people that want be afra let us come together let us whatever is our differences let us marshal it out i agree with what the the the, the poster what um zbd has been saying we are republican you see it, it, the, the reason why we succeed is because of republicanism the french people are also like that they have different sections it is what a, a society would want would grow when it's dynamic is different in various aspects you have that, that is the basis of progress you have to have alternative other different creative minds if you it is if you have that then you can key into an alternative when one fails so it yeah, is part right. of development is in fact uh, republican societies like the Igbos don't unite more often they don't unite often but they progress more than monolithic societies that just have one person it is what it is the consequences of our development but we have to in this time we have to unite see let me tell you this that barrister what is right if we don't get behalf, let me tell you i'm one of the youths i'm one of the youths i i i didn't work in nigeria for more than three days before because i applied for work in all the federal hospitals in nigeria and i didn't get work i didn't even get one interview in some of the interviews i applied with some people they will look at the state of origin if you are Igbo, they won't invite you for for interviews so some of the Yoruba guys I applied with, I even well, I was a person that survived. They, they were being called for interviews, but I was not called. You have to understand, Nigeria have rejected those. And while they were doing all those things, I now decided to apply for work outside Nigeria. And I got a better work outside Nigeria. But you know, you are a foreigner and you are a foreigner and you cannot be given the same right like as the owners of the land. Thank you, my brother. Thank yes, you. my brother. I, I, you are God bless you. Yeah, I think you, you are correct in what you are saying. Uh, but we need to just qualify. Thing, I just okay. want to tell the that the elder has failed us. The elders have failed us. The elders have failed us. The barrister should know that, please. We have, if we have to work with that, we have to create a new form of elders, not these ones that have failed us. Okay. All right. The future is the youth. The All elders right. have All right. their life. Um, and okay, they, I get your point now. You are, you are now. So we have that. to create another form of elders and pursue our destiny, please. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You are um your summary that the elders right, have thank you. us. Yeah. Doctor uh Okechuku, you are welcome and uh, I appreciate your contribution. Your summary is that the elders have failed us. Um now your father does not cease to be your father because you think he has failed you. Um yes. It is possible that the elders have failed us, but we also have grown to become elders. Now, some of us, some of us who passed through the civil war, we have also grown to become elders. Yes. Some of us, in fact, when you hit the age of 60, you can be considered an elder. Is it not true? Yes. Sir. So, elder. yeah, when, you, when you hit the age of 60, 60, not 50, you can be considered an elder even from 50s and above you are not a child but from 60 we can consider you an elder now and some of us have hit that age some of us who experienced the war um at young age as little boys have also hit that age so um if people like dr namdazikiwe um you feel um failed us yes it's possible he failed us but we shouldn't now um uh, allow such thing to bring negativism into us uh, to draw us behind 
and therefore destroy the very fabric of our Igbo society of that is instead of respecting elders said because the elders fed us therefore there should be no more respect for elders that is wrong that is like going to an extreme because elders fed you more should not now give us impetus to disrespect the elders that is wrong we must respect our elders we must respect them if we want to correct them we can correct them in with respect now i said that when i joined the struggle i gathered the elders together now these elders why are they of all the, let me let me just give you a little thing that happened do you know that those elders most of them ran away most of them ran away when i brought the papers for them to sign <laughs> and they looked at it i said yes they suit against nigerian government put your name put your hand there sign most of them ran away only very few stood their ground and asked me to explain properly and i explained it properly and they understood it and they put their signatures do you know that time the chairman of the southeast traditional rulers ran away and um, his royal majesty Ezra Zobu wrote down his name he used his hand and wrote down the names of the people he wanted to sign that paper so the first person he wrote his name was the chairman of the southeast traditional rulers I will mention his name now yeah. in order to protect him. Yeah. But the chairman of the Southeast Traditional Rulers at that time, he put his name there and then put other names, including his own, and then said I should look for them to sign the, this paper. Do you know that the chairman of the, the Southeast Traditional Rulers refused to sign up? He was delaying, he was trying to frustrate this case. And I had to go back to his lordship, the Honorable Justice Ezozobu, who is also a traditional ruler. I now had to go back to him and say, your lordship, please, we have to do something. He's getting late. He said, what? That this man must say, I said, no, your lordship, I want to argue my case. He said, what? Okay, address me. You know, he's a retired judge, but you know, he knows I'm a lawyer. I said, okay, address me. Address me. Let me know your point. What is your, your legal argument on this? I said, your your lordship i know because of the rule of internet of uh, customary law that the head of the community the head of a clan must sign now you are confusing it to mean that the traditional ruler the chairman of the traditional ruler now is the head of the council of elders in biafra land i say your honor uh, your lordship this is wrong what the customary law says is the council of elders not council of traditional rulers so when i made this, this, this difference he he he, he shrugged and uh, and uh, listened carefully i said because the council of traditional rulers is a statutory body created in the days of uh, under the administration of sani abacha and then we are uh, now they became a statutory organ which the federal government now pays but the council of elders is under customary law, Council of Elders of Indigenous People of the Land have right under customary law to organize their people, govern them under customary law. It has nothing to do with statutory institution of the cost of the uh, Council of Traditional Rulers under Nigerian law. Therefore, that man that is trying to destroy this case, we must get rid of him and we must we must ignore him and move forward. So he looked at it and said, "It's true." That I should expunge his name and let the rest of the elders sign. Because among the elders, some are traditional rulers, while some are not. Like Dr. Dozike Dife is not a traditional ruler, but he's an elder. And now the remaining people signed and the case went forward. So I now found out that that traditional ruler had uh, some kind of relationship with Sokoto Caliphate. Hey, okay, his salary, they come direct. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can see among among our elders some of them are trustworthy you can rely on some of them while we may not be able to rely on others 
So it's not that all of them are bad. No, you can't say all of them are bad. All of them have uh, disappointed us. Look at these these um, elders who put their neck out when they had that uh, Asu Rock will come and uh, some say Asu Rock will come and arrest us. They said, okay, let them come and arrest us. We are the elders of Biafra land. Because after I explained the whole thing, they understood it. They signed the document. And but, we stopped the document but, on Asu Rock. Yeah, Asu, but, Rock now, Asu Rock now found out the people that signed the, uh, the document in court. Um, and they were not arrested. Yes. But Barista, these guys now that are complaining that the elders have disappointed them, have they tried to hear the, the elder side of the story? You are young like me. We did not see Biafran war. Those elders are the people that eat rat and dog and all sorts of ants and animals to survive. They know what they went through during the war. They, 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 most of them didn't believe that they would see you today. They wouldn't even get married to even to have you as their son. Calling the names, have you seen? Look, if a child grows up and call the father, I said to him, "You are stupid." While other your mates are making money and you are there playing around, what would your father reply to you as a son? He said, "The ball is now on your court." You have not experienced anything. Anybody who tried to explain Biafran war will try to compare it to hair fire. Do you know what they call economic blockade? You don't know anything about that. Do you know that in Biafran war, the salt that you throw away, the remaining food that you wash away, is like gold and diamond? Yes. That's how we, that's how, it was horrible. And you we, come back today to try to reactivate that old memory by telling them, support me, let me go and do what. They will tell you must be out of your mind. These people passed through her. They suffered like, look, no Messiah, no, no, no Moses for them. Nobody came for their rescue. In Syria today, they may drop food from, from plane. Even in the Second World War, America dropped uh, cho cho chocolate. But in Biafran War, these people eat grass. They will enter inside bush, fighting grass with, uh, with goat and cattle. And now you want to remind them to go back or for them to back you. Okay, as you have just said, um, Nigeria will show you, you will see. Are you not seeing tanks in your area now? <laughs> Are you have brothers are not that making videos asking, hey, this one Nigeria tank is coming. Are we at war? But you told you tell, you made them to understand, you will show them. My people, please don't blame the elders. We did not see what they see, we, and we are praying not to pass through what they pass through. There is a reason why these old men are keeping quiet. There's and something there's something there, there's something uh, Justice Ezozobu told me that when after that I, I, I now began to have very big respect for our Biafra elders. You know what he said? Um, should I pick Barista? Yeah, I pick it after I'll tell you what he said. Hello, my brother on the line, can you hear me? Uh, one minute, one minute. I, I, I was compared to call, call again. Um, I, I heard all, all what Barista said and what you just said now. I just want to make some clarifications. Eh? One is people have to know history. And uh, when you make a mistake, you realize you made a mistake. You have to know why you made that mistake. The reason why we lost the Biafran War, I think, was not because of all those things you were seeing. It's because the, the river Rhinos were not totally with us. That was the reason why the blockade worked. If you control your coast, you can open up your, your area for things to come. And if you, if, you, if you sustain yourself in war for some time, 
some other countries will start recognizing you. The America we know today wouldn't have been United States of America. Just it was just a few a few months. It would have been two nations, the Union of America and Confederate Confederate States of America. It was just two months. It was just two months, a little bit. You see, when you scare somebody with with debt, that person is already dead. When you scare me with debt, I have to assume that I'm already dead. If Nigeria is trying to scare the Biafrans with war, we know we, we know ourselves. And, and an evil man cannot live under subjugation. He will prefer to die, and including me. If Nigeria is threatening us with war, then it's better they kill us. It is better they kill us if they are threatening us my with brother, war. Can I come in? See, listen. Let me let me finish. I've not wait, made wait, my calm point. Down, calm down, calm down. Can you? Can I? You see. Our elders, I've not finished what I'm saying. I, I, I can't back. You mentioned the river right here. Yeah, why, why would you? Why, why would you? Yes, that was the, the blockade you are talking about. Yes. Because of the river right here. Yes, what caused the problem with the river right Now, areas? but the, up to today, um, you are still looking for Biafra. Have you tried to reconcile or to treat the matter that, that is what we are we should do exactly? That is what we should do. We should reconcile with the river right areas. We should know what their problem is. We should know why they wouldn't, because they've seen this 57 years after 1970. People have known. Before that 1970, people were making conjectures of what Nigeria would be. But after that 1957 years from 1970, of, of all the years from 1970, people have known what Nigeria is. Even the Yorubas that fought for it have known that this thing they fought for wasn't really what they would have fought for. Everybody knows the middle That's belters. The middle belters. See, I lived in Benue. I worked a little bit in Benue. I I I have a first-hand information of the what the Fulani people are doing to teach people. I I I have a first-class information about that. I worked for like a year in Benue. We are just receiving. I we the middle belters now know what Nigeria is. They know that what they fought for in one Nigeria was not actual one. They fought for the Fulani oligarchy. This is what we should use. You see, these are elders you are calling out. That you are an elder. What makes you an elder is not age. You might have a father that you are smarter than. I yes, know some fathers. Brother, that you know what yes. these guys pass so, through the war. An elder is not an age. Let me tell. Let me tell. Excuse you, me, sir, please. Excuse an, me. An elder the, the, is a respect. Making, it's, it's out of point. Respect. I, I will not accept your argument because our elders really eat grass during the Afro war. And nobody came for their rescue. And most of them, you will still find the, the sign of, 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 of um, 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 what they call the sickness in their body today. And you so want to reactivate. Enough, the, the elders, excuse me. Sir, and you want to enough. reactivate that same problem. And you want that elders to support you. My brother, you come to German okay. and tell the Germans but, 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 about, sir, about war. But, but sir. But sir, the, 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 even our elders that ate the grasses you are talking about, they are not the ones that are, that I'll say, that failed us. The political elders in Igbo land are didn't fight in the war. What were, let, let's go through all the histories of all the political <laughs> leaders in Igbo okay. land. Okay. Let's go okay. like Niawo or all those ones. Did they fight? The okay, ones that my fought okay. are the ones, the ones that fought are the ones that even supporting the Biafra. The ones that did not fight and ran away, their children are everywhere. They are the ones that you call elders now. They are now preventing destroying okay, my brother. everything. Okay. The Nigerian okay, state does talk to his people, they will take it. So okay, far, the my brother. Them small money. All right, my brother. All I these have the that, that we say have failed us, they did not they did not fight in the war. They did Okay. Fight. Okay, now listen, so listen. What is it that okay. they ate if you did not fight in the war and you had one that was running away? Okay, now you listen. See, even the Germany you are trying to mention, the same thing happened in Germany. When Germany lost the second world war, the first world war, they are they are elders into they are they were practicing trying to protect what they have and they agreed in all the things that the allies said okay the uh, treaty of versailles uh, and, be, be, and that, was, that was why hitler came into power make not, it, the, the make it a not shorter, please just cut it you see you see uh, uh, um we we need truth we need to say the truth in everything there, there is no substitute to the truth the reason why nigeria is failing is because there was no truth in nigeria there was not. That is why Nigeria. If you don't tell okay. yourself the truth, me, you will continue Excuse failing. Me. You realize that so, Nigeria is failing today because there is no truth, right? 
Yes, yes. Why are we creating Biafra on manipulation? We are, where are, who are we manipulating, please, my brother? Are you not on Facebook? Who, who do you think? I'm on Facebook. Are you not seeing the type of lies and news that they are feeding? That is why people? that that is why people need to be enlightened. If you are like, you see, the reason why they they, they not in us are in power, they, their leaders are still in power, doing whatever they want is is because their people are not enlightened. You can you can show but, forth but, any kind but, of but news. Somebody but came to this truth. program. Somebody came to this program yesterday and attacked mm -hmm. me. Attacked me because I said. Radio Biafra should create Radio Biafra Hausa. And that Radio Biafra Hausa will not I agree with you. spread I agree the news of you. Biafra, but enlighten the Hausas to turn the exactly. gun on themselves. Exactly. But exactly. They misunderstand exactly. me and they are using it against me. I, <laughs> please, that's what I want you to not to stop. You see, uh, when you fight a war, you fight it in various ways. You see, the problem in Nigeria is just one thing. That house of Fulani oligarchy, and when you enlighten the house of populace, they will th that Fulani stronghold will go. That will, that was why Jonathan was doing building those Amajiri schools for them, and they were so angry. When you enlighten the house of populace, the house that that Fulani stronghold will go. They will want these things. The reason why we are struggling all these things is we are enlightened. The Biafran people are enlightened. Okay, if well, we are not enlightened, you, please release uh -huh. uh, so that we will be able to continue. <laughs> All right, I think our time is even oh, up now. Yes, let, let me just drop one thing before I go, please. Okay, drop, please. I, I, you see, I like what you are doing. It's good to have an alternative mind. It's good to have alternative mind. When I was growing up, I used to like, like somebody, a lady that is close to me that opposes me. I will listen to your opposition. It will, I will add it to the one I have. Please, even if your job is to oppose, it creates an alternative mind. How we will have, walk and get to where we are going. I agree with you, but in all, the, in all our opposition, let us have a unification point. Now, the point is that we want this thing to keep alone. If Nigeria right. can offer us Biafra, actually, if Nigeria can offer us Biafra inside Nigeria, I will take it, the Nigerian Biafra. Where well, that is everybody will that, be free, that, you manage where, your own thing, where, you develop at my your brother, own rate, at, at the, my where you are, we will take it. But they are not my offering brother, it. My brother, that is the you first know? step. That is the first stage. That is the first stage. Just like you have, that's just like you have Scotland within Britain, Ireland, uh, Wales, England, all together. That is the first step. We must organize ourselves together as Biafrans first, and then have the experience of governance, have the experience of exercising sovereign power for a few years before we can pull out. Of law and be disciplined so, our people are yes, out of so control people can pull so that is we are trying to the first step is to build biafra first within nigeria and we are moving forward listen we will get it just watch very soon it will be over we shall get it so um that 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 will come later the teachings will come later but for today today we are talking about what is happening this militarization of eastern nigeria and we want the federal government to address it and um, we don't want such a thing to continue. Don't put fear into the people. We are not at war with Nigeria. We are not at war with Nigeria. We are using the legal methodology, the diplomacy, the judicial process. So there is no war about that. Therefore, I'm asking the federal government to withdraw all their tanks. There is no need for that. Yes. Um... As uh, 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 I don't know how to put it. Uh, let me repeat it again, Barrister. Uh, I don't know whether it's a wrong idea. Um, the way Nigeria is pushing in the heavy equipment, uh, ordering enough um, guns Mil and uh, yes uh, from outside country and everything is being moved to eastern region with those that operate it. I think there is something they call um, these uh, um, um, NGOs that look for human rights and abuses. They we are pushing against good luck Jonathan during the time of uh, Jonathan Tenor in the war against uh, Boko Haram. To the extent Obama gave Jonathan arm embargo, there is no longer weapon to fight the terrorists. But today, Buhari is using the equipment he, the America is supplying to kill his own people. And no 
um, what they call it, uh, these people, um, 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 all these American NGOs operating on corner in Nigeria have not even okay. filed a complaint to their government. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. We can file. We can file an order now. I'm um, compelling the Nigerian government to um, to withdraw their 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 heavy military presence because there's no war. But then we there are certain things we have to do. We have to. There are certain things we have to do to prove that Nigeria has overstepped the bounds. That is has acted disproportionately yes it's like yes quite they may say they are being precautious but it's like it, it is disproportionate to any imagined or imaginary threat so we can commence such an action um <laughs> well that is that's why we are it's always good if we are together yes we can make such an action but well one can do just the much he can do um, we are we are so, together we are together barrister we are together only that uh different uh, if that german they said that is a uh, fashion minor it's different opinions <laughs> yeah what i mean by being together now assuming um what this thing i'm saying now well, so we can just prepare the thing and then go in and start the start the action and um start doing the proper thing that should be done and then those uh, things will be withdrawn so but action has to be taken it's not just talking yes they may hear now that i have said federal government i am urging federal government to withdraw their heavy military presence from the east yeah that's all but that is not enough and action has to be taken someone has to argue something about it and then and they will see the reason uh, to do that and then they withdraw them so a lot of things have to be done um, uh, i'm in support of withdrawing heavy equipment but not withdrawing the military that is preventing these kidnappers uh you know? yes it's when you go into the details now you, that's why i'm saying disproportionate that is it has to be proportionate are we made in your faith when about proportionality yeah, I, I understand a proportionality so it is when we go into the details we now say these points are necessary to keep them to to check the excesses of the kidnappers and the, and the criminals but this one is excessive no this one should be withdrawn you know there are certain things to be done so and the shooting of our youth should also yes, put yes, on that control yes. they may use tear gas they may use water exactly. cannon exactly, uh, exactly. That to control the crowd so um i think our time is up is yes, our, our, uh, yes. okay we are we and, have tried today barista you know and we have not even hit we have not even hit the major issues we haven't even entered <laughs> yeah we have not even entered the major issues well yes. since it's every day we every should, day yes. one hour we should yes. so, it for tomorrow tomorrow so, again so that the going. people will have the reason to come back again to get the really oh. um yes, and yes. Uh, tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's all right, Minister, thank, thank you very you. much for today's show. Thank, thank you. Uh, today's episode is very perfect and everything went on well. Yes. Say thank you very much. Thank you. For thank you. Educating our people coming to this platform to. Uh, yes, thank you. I got your point. Um, my final words to all the Bia Francis days. Um, please let us restore our traditional mannerism of respect of to elders we must respect our elders despite the fact that some of them have failed us yet our traditional institution must be respected we must respect our elders in your village in your family respect your seniors in fact in my in my village any person that is your senior, you call him dead. -day. Yes, yes. We call him dead. -day. You must. We have respect. Or if a, a woman, dada. Da. So we have that respect in our village. So let that respect continue. We must not destroy the very fabric of our Igbo society that helped us. Please let us restore orderliness and discipline in our land. Yeah. God bless you all, Jasper, and love all of you.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Barista. God bless you. God, God bless you, Barista. Uh, okay. Bye bye for now. And, bye bye. Uh, we'll see us tomorrow. Bye. At the same time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. So, my people, my people, as you can see, we have done it again. You know, and I thank all of you who came in to learn, to listen, and to pick points. As from today, you will be able to call in with your WhatsApp call. Any call that you made will come in directly. Nothing will hinder it. If you call with anything that we are televising, now the door is open. I said, God bless you, my people. And for those who misunderstand, I will only tell you, calm yourself down neutralize your brain don't be watching this program with grudges listen to it we all are the same and we are chasing the same course please don't misunderstand me or misquote me this program is mirror african television the door is open if you know that there is other person somewhere there who is ready to counter what we are saying and he's ready to come on air, write me, contact me, I will give you platform, I'll give you time, and people will listen to your own part of argument, call you, ask you questions. This is Miro African Television. It's, an, it's not a group, it's not an organization, it's a pure, neutral platform. Yes, last time I tried to advise to our radio biafra that they should because i believe they are more larger than me <laughs> i'm just a little cockroach little tonto, you know um they, they should um, establish uh, um, um this radio biafra house radio biafra house will enlighten the houses making them to understand to know their rights so that the weapon they are important to fight you they may turn it to use it to that's all i have to add for you so let us dance the motivation song and uh have our peace god bless you my people <laughs> Bunde, 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 bunde